Hello, I'm Steve Larson, engineer with Cat Pumps. Today we're going to talk about spray nozzles. You know, what is a spray nozzle? A spray nozzle is a precision device that facilitates dispersion of liquid into a spray. And we're going to talk about, to start with, three basic shapes and what they're used for. So as I head to the whiteboard here, we'll talk about a direct impact or zero degree nozzle. So basically, this is where the liquid is entering into the nozzle. And then the nozzle has, as a shape, it has a small hole that is straight through it. It's nice and straight, precision round, and the spray that comes out of it is very tight. And when it impacts the surface, it hits in a nice circular pattern. This is called a zero degree nozzle, and it impacts the surface with the most force of any type of nozzle. It can do damage if the pressure is too high. And so we use that for um, aggressive cleaning, whether it be graffiti or just caked in dirt, whatever. That's what you would use one of those nozzles for. And then we have the fan or cone spray nozzles. Again, we start with the same type of body. But then when it's machined, it's machined with a ball-shaped part that comes in. And then we cut a V-shape in it here. And the resultant path that comes out of it is a spray that's wide. And it impacts a surface shape, makes a long skinny oval. And this fan nozzle then is good for cleaning large surfaces, moving lots of debris and, and things like that. And uh, usually it'll have a degree associated with it. And the degree is the, the measure of this angle. You know, this could be a 25 degree nozzle and it represents this angle that it emits from the nozzle. Then the third type of nozzle is a misting nozzle, or sometimes referred to as an impingement nozzle. And it, again, starts with the same inner shape with the fluid coming in. It has a straight hole through it, and usually these are very small in nature, but then there's a, a small rod that's welded and attached, and it hits the water that comes through here hits that immediately upon exiting the nozzle and it disperses the water into many, many thousands of tiny droplets of water and, and makes like a mist or a fog. And that's used for evaporative cooling and applications like that. So those are your three basic shapes of nozzles, types of nozzles. Again, we have the zero degree or direct impact. We have the fan nozzle and we have the misting nozzle. Next, we're going to talk about um, nozzle sizing. Each nozzle has a size or a number associated with it. First thing I'm going to throw up here is we're going to talk about a number four nozzle. What does that number represent? Well, what it represents is the flow through the nozzle in gallons per minute, GPM, at 4,000 PSI. So what this means, if I had a number three nozzle, it would be three gallons at 4,000. A number two nozzle would be two gallons at 4,000 PSI. Now, we don't always have 4,000 PSI on the nozzle, so we have to be able to calculate what flow and pressure we'll have at different, different rates. So if I were to drop the flow on a number four nozzle to two GPM, what pressure would we have? One wants to think that it would be 2,000 PSI because we got half the flow, we get half the pressure. Well, that actually is not true because it's a squared function the way the water goes through the nozzle and has a pressure drop. So the right answer is 1,000 PSI. And so we have to be able to explain that in a formula for doing calculations. And the formula actually comes out that P2 which is going to be the 4,000 equals P1 times the ratio F2 over F1, and then this is squared. So if we throw the numbers into there, we get 4 over 2, which is 2. Square that, we get 4. 4 times 1,000 is 4,000. So the formula works out. So we can use this formula to calculate what flow we need in a system. And an example of that that we're going to run is 
we have a system that is 3 GPM at 1200 PSI. So now the question is, what nozzle do I use for this system? It's not very intuitive because nothing rounds very good with 4,000 PSI. So we're going to throw the numbers at the formula and see what shakes out. So for this, P2 we're going to use is 1,200 because that's the pressure we want to end up with. So now, what do we use for P1? Well, we're going to use the relationship that we know if we know um, the flow at 4,000, then we know the nozzle number. So we're going to put a 4,000 here. Now, what goes F2 and F1? Do we know what the flow number 2 is that relates to the 1,200 PSI? Well, yes, we do. We're going to run at 3. Do we know what flow relates at 4,000? No, we don't know that right now. So we're going to continue to call that F1. And then we're going to square this. Now you got to throw some algebra at it, and we're not going to do all the algebra, but the final answer that we get from all that is F1 equals 5.47. So that number that we end up with represents the flow through a nozzle at 4,000 PSI. Also represents the nozzle number, and this same nozzle then would do 3 GPM at 1,200 PSI. So we need a number 5.5 nozzle if we're not going to consider bypass flow. So we're going to start by doing that. So we're going to have a pump here. It's operating at 3 GPM. The discharge of the flow goes through a loader or regulator valve, bypass back to the inlet of the pump. We're going to put a little pressure gauge on here at 1200. We'll run through a pressure line, a trigger gun, and then we got our spray nozzle here. And we got a number 5.5 in there. So we've already learned that at 1200 PSI, we'll get three gallons a minute through here. So I'm going to put a three here. That leaves us with zero GPM for flow in the bypass. And that's not always recommended to have zero GPM in the bypass, but it can work in this situation. So this system is running and everything is going fine. As we shut the gun off, of course, the three gallons will go here and the zero gallons will go there. And then when we reopen the trigger gun, again, we'll reinitiate our three gallons a minute out the tip at 1200 PSI. Now what happens over time, many a couple years or a few thousand hours, this nozzle is going to wear. And when it wears, the hole gets larger. When the hole gets larger, the um, pressure will drop in it because we still have the same flow. So let's say this got larger and now because of that, we still have three gallons a minute that we're trying to push through it. So this pressure is going to drop and maybe be 1100 PSI. So we've lost pressure in the system, not because the pump has worn out, not because the unloader is bad, but because the nozzle has worn, which is very hard to see. So to remedy this, we could have chosen a different nozzle to put in our system. What if we were to put a number five in here? Now, when the pump is running three gallons at 1200, which we still have three gallons, we still set the unloader at 1200 PSI, we now have 2.75 gallons per minute out the nozzle and 0.25 gallons in bypass. Because the nozzle is a little bit smaller, it has less flow at the same pressure. And this will let us account for nozzle wear over time because as this nozzle starts to get larger and larger and larger, it's going to approach a 5.5, which then will allow this to go up to 3. This can go down to 0. And we still haven't seen a pressure drop yet because we still have the nozzle that can create enough back pressure to keep it at 1,200 PSI. So that's why you always want to consider to have 
a little bit of bypass when you're sizing your nozzle. Usually you like to round down to the next size. And that's the proper way to size a nozzle for a system.